welcome to the Burnout to Abundance series. I am your host, Dr. Grace Shah. Today, I have with me Dr. Matt Hopcraft, who was one of my course coordinators during my university days at the University of Melbourne. Uh, Matt has since been on MasterChef, became the CEO of the Victorian branch of the Australian Dental Association, and he's about to return to Melbourne Uni in a new role in professional practice. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Grace, for having me. Uh, Matt, you've done so much in the last sort of close to 20 years since we've known each other. And um, yeah, how would you summarize what you do um, in 60 seconds if you're introducing yourself to someone? Um, it's, that's a really good question. It's, um, I mean, I guess I would describe myself as, as, a, as a public health dentist and, a, and an advocate for, for public health um, to improve you know, to improve oral health for people and to to help dentists to be the best dentists that they can possibly be. Mm. And um, we're going to hear a little bit more about what you've done in that space and uh, what you are planning to do. But in the past, I know you've had experience with uh, mental health and with burnout, which is why you're so passionate about this area. Can you tell us about your experiences and what stage of life you were at? Yeah, that's, and I, th I think, you know, it's it's such an important topic and, and something that I've really dived into a lot over the last couple of years, probably because of the, the, the pandemic and sort of seeing how challenging that, that has been for everyone, not only in our profession, but but kind of more broadly. Mm -hmm. And in and in doing some research into that area to try and understand what was going on in our profession, it, it gave me the opportunity to reflect a little bit more, you know, kind of personally. Um and and you know I sort of think back to to times in my life that that have been particularly stressful, um, and you know in hindsight I guess um, understanding that that some of those you know were, were mental health challenges that I just didn't kind of have the probably have the tools or the language to understand at the time, mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the the big things that that. I think is so important for us now is and, and it has been in mental in the mental health space is dealing with the stigma um, and so I'm sure that there was a part of of um, me thinking at, at times you know I don't want to I don't kind of want to grapple with this because oh, something's falling down in the background because uh, maybe that's a, a good metaphor for, <laughs> for our mental health things falling apart um, that that's you know um, we don't want to gra grapple with mental health because we think of mental health very differently than than um, than our physical health, uh, and so I think it is really important that we that we talk about this. But you know, I went through a period of time working um, where I just I just worked too hard, really, um, and and you know pushed myself beyond where I think it was kind of feasible for me to continue to to keep operating, um, and. And ended up leaving a workplace because of that. Um, where, and in, you know, again, in hindsight, um, you know, I probably would have been much better to to engage with with you know what what was actually really going on um, from a mental health point of view. And that might have that might have sort of changed the way that things panned out. And you know, more recently through the pandemic, um, clearly a, a really challenging time for everyone. And in the work that I was doing. Um, you know, burnout became, um, you know, uh, well, you know, effectively got to the stage where I was, I was really risking burning out because of the, 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 the pressure of the work, the, the amount of time that it was taking. Um, but, and, and it, it, I, it took a long time for me to, to, again, to kind of recognize that, but, um, you know, sort of fortunately seeking appropriate, proper health care, um, I think has really has really been um, important for me. Mm. Yeah, and I'm sure. Yeah, I'm the same. When I was burning out myself, I didn't recognize that was the issue, and you just wonder why. Why am I so tired all the time? Why am I so frustrated when I should be happy with my circumstance? Um, yeah, what are some of the symptoms now that you look for um, and try to pick up before you action? Yeah, oh, I mean, exhaustion and you know, emotional exhaustion is kind of the key mm. bit of of burnout. It's it's that one of the most defining features, mm. and and I mean, I do think we do need to be a little bit a little bit um, 
well, educative, I suppose, for people because uh, we're now hearing so much about about burnout, and we've heard a lot about it over the last couple of years, and it, you know, particularly in the healthcare setting, and and for us particularly then in in that dental space, um, it's important for us to to understand that that burnout does go beyond just exhaustion because we all do work work really hard. Um, and you know, working hard for an extended period of time is is exhausting. It it becomes kind of physically um, and and mentally exhausting. Um, so it's it's careful to kind of recognise that that burnout is more than just exhaustion. Mm. Um, and when it does start to impact on your ability to to kind of function properly, so there's a cognitive element to 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 burn out and you know yes there's a cognitive element to tiredness um in and of itself um but when it starts to affect your ability to to work properly so there's a there's a professional efficacy component as well um there's definitely a um a, a symptom component to it that that probably relates to depression and anxiety and probably more to depression in some people and again not not in everyone um and and probably an interpersonal relationship so sort of a shutting off from from people as well and i think you know when you start to see some of those things all kind of coming together that the, that the workload's really intense um that your work performance is starting to decline um that you're having trouble sleeping and for me <laughs> having trouble sleeping is a really big a really big part of things um you know those those sort of things um are, are real warning signs i think that and, and you know, for some people in it that might be burnout, for others it might be anxiety disorder, for others it might be in the depression space. But I think, as as a general kind of rule, when you're starting to notice that, um, or other people are starting to notice in you, which is probably more important, um, that those sort of things are extending for for you know two or three weeks or or longer, um, that it's starting to affect your day to day activities things that you would normally be able to do um is is a real sign that you know perhaps it's time to be to be seeking some professional help mm. and um i know you did some research during this past few years on around this topic um what are some of the key takeaways that you wanted to share with people yeah and and the research you know sort of was born out of of seeing what was happening with people um but not really seeing an uptake. We through the dental association, we had a um, you know an, an employee or a member assistance program, a free confidential counselling service, um, but we weren't seeing a really huge spike in in uptake in that, and it and it got me to wondering, you know, what really was going on. And we we kind of know anecdotally that um, mental health is is a problem in our profession, but there's actually not a lot of really good data. So we we did a big survey at the end of 2021 that we've now been sort of analysing, publishing over the last um, six months. And, you know, probably not surprisingly, um, the results show that, that um, you know, we see really high levels of, of um, psychological distress, um, you know, one in three people reporting moderate to severe psychological distress, one in four with symptoms consistent with, with burnout, which is sort of higher than the, the general population um, about one in ten reported um, a diagnosis, a current diagnosis of depression, and I think it was probably about thirty percent, twenty-five to thirty percent, with a previous diagnosis of depression. Similar around um, uh, around anxiety disorder, you know, about one in ten with anxiety disorder, and so at rates higher than the than the general population, and then kind of really concerningly, um, one in six reported thoughts of suicide in the past 12 months mm -hmm. um, and about 5.6 percent had reported that they'd ever made an attempt to take their own life so mm -hmm. sort of seeing that 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 full spectrum of of mental health problems that existed at a level um generally much higher than the than the general population um and you know, at, at the same levels or higher than what we would see in, in other health professionals and um, medical practitioners in particular as a, a population group that that is studied quite a bit. So, you know, really concerning data um, 
that then sort of points to us, you know, we need to be doing these sort of things, you know, having more conversations about, about mental health, about how common it is, about trying to break down some of the stigmas associated with it, about um, providing more resources and support for people, um, encouraging people to seek care um, so that people can look after their, their mental health in the way that we've talked for a long time about our physical health, you know, in, in dentistry, ergonomics is such a big issue. And we, you know, we talk a lot about back and neck and those sorts of things. We should be talking about our mental health in exactly the same way mm. um, with exactly the, that zero amount of stigma that's associated with physical health. Um, it should be the same for our mental health. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for publishing all of those papers. Cause I actually use them now in some of my, <laughs> my talks um, and it's important. Um, to have the data to back up and show the need. But yeah, like yet so, you know, so few people are willing to actually share vulnerably about their experiences. Um, why do you think that might be? I, and yeah, I mean, there's still clearly a stigma associated mm -hmm. with with mental health. And, you know, I I think people um, are, feel comfortable going into work and saying you know i i had a i had an injury i fell off my bike i was playing sport on the weekend i you know was, i did something and i've injured my hand or i've injured my leg and i can't work for the next week um and everyone else is accepting of that and particularly when um when the physical injury is is obvious and apparent um and people can understand how that might impact on your ability to deliver healthcare. i mean i've broken so many fingers it's not funny um and you know, you can't practice dentistry with 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 your hand in a cast, uh, having just had surgery. And people understand that, and they go, "Yeah, of course." You know, take time off work; that's completely fine. When people can't obviously see a mental health impact, and they don't know how you're struggling internally, um, it it has a people have a different perception of that. So that I think that stigma is really important. And then I think there's this other real concern, and and again, another kind of myth that we have to bust. Um, you know, people are really concerned about um, the dental board and, and registration and mandatory reporting uh, and this perception that that a mental health diagnosis would trigger mandatory reporting um, and, and therefore it places their registration and their ability to practice at risk. Um, and I think it's really worth sort of digging into that a little bit more and understanding, you know, that the mandatory reporting guidelines set the the threshold really high for um for a, a, your treating gp or a treating psychologist to make a mandatory report they have to be concerned that that you're an impairment um and it's, so it's under the impairment um kind of trigger around mandatory reporting that it, it places patients at substantial risk of harm and a mental health diagnosis doesn't do that so um if you have depression, if you have anxiety disorder, if you have burnout, that that doesn't place the patient at, at substantial risk of harm. Um, and therefore, it's more important for you to be seeking care and to be under the treatment of a health practitioner, um, which is viewed very favorably by by the dental board if there was if there ever was a, uh, an issue about performance rather than avoiding seeking care and risking your mental health getting worse, which is actually a greater risk to patients. So people are people are concerned about that and and they shouldn't be. And it's you know really important for, for people to look at that. Um, but still there's that 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 broader society stigma that's associated with mental health that that, that we do need to break down. Mm. And I think people don't see that there is hope after, you know, after you have uh, burnout or mental health struggles and like what you can learn from the pain or what good can come out from it. So um, that's why I feel like it's important in this series to interview people who have gone through that and myself as well. I think that, you know, to show people you can still have a career and be inspiring, even if you acknowledge those things. Um, so can you share with me some of the blessings that you've had from your, you know, burnout or struggles in the past or like changes you've made or great things you've done because of those? I, I think, I think actually kind of the most important thing is, you know, and thinking about it kind of logically as a health professional, um, you know, injury and healing um and you know being able to kind of um acknowledge that 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 it's a it's no different 
um, in many respects to, to, to that physical injury um, and therefore then being able to look after yourself in a better kind of way and you know perhaps thinking about it in a, in a chronic health setting um or you know thinking of a chronic health disease that needs long-term management um and you know so then what are the things that i have to do um to look after my mental health and well-being in the same way that i have to do things to look after my physical health and well-being um and you know just changing little bits of of your lifestyle to kind of recognize that um you know there are there are things that are not sustainable um in, in a in a work environment or in in the way that, that that you operate you know that you can't continue to work excessively long hours that you need to take breaks that physical activities are really important um, assistance to that um, using mental health professionals you know t- talking to a psychologist to kind of understand how you operate um, is really it can be quite challenging um, but quite beneficial you know for me um, learning how to say no uh, has been one of my big challenges because I like doing things um, and I like helping people. And this is one of the reasons why, particularly with burnout, it is such a problem in, in the health professions because we're, we're people that are kind of hardwired to help people. It's why we got into the, these professions in the first place and helping people is, is our, you know, our reason for existence Um, and burnout. There's a, there's a, component of burnout which is about just kind of continually giving of yourself emotionally until you run out of of you know emotional resources Mm. um and it's really hard to set a boundary um and say no i can't do this um i'd love to do this but i just i can't um and that's that's a really challenging kind of thing to be able to do um so it, it it I think, yeah, that importance of, um, you know, having a, a bit of a deep dive into yourself, which is really confronting. And, and I think that that's, you know, again, one of the barriers. Um, it's it's hard to look into yourself and understand what makes you tick. Um, but it is it can be really rewarding mm-hmm. because it can explain a lot about why, why, you, why you do tick a certain way. Um, and once you understand that, it probably you know, there's the bit about how does that, how does that help you and how does that um, protect you and, you know, how to use that from a preventive point of view. But there's also the the other positive bit about that is, you know, if you understand how you, how you tick, if you understand the the certain things that, that you do really well or how you, how you operate, that can actually be really beneficial for you. You you know, how do you harness that? How do you leverage that um, as well? And that's probably been, um, a real eye opener for me and you know that it, it, it probably sounds a bit trite to say now but you know it's it's one of those things where you think you know if i'd done this 10 years ago or 20 years ago um you know how much different would that have would that have made things um you know having a better understanding about about you know what's going on up there yeah uh, yeah i i think what you said the healthcare professionals we are a caring profession isn't it but so much time we forget to self-care and put on our own oxygen mask before we help others. Um, and I think that's one reason why we have these conversations and trying to promote more, you know, more of these activities among healthcare professionals. Um, what do you do now with your life? And, um, you know, like in recent years, what sort of, what your what's your role and what is it going to look like moving forward? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, from a, from a work perspective at the moment, uh, you know, with the dental association, um, you know, and supporting supporting dental practitioners um, and advocating to improve oral health has, has been, and, and that's always been kind of a big focus of of the thing that I do, um, and and the the thing that drives me, that you know, purpose, um, and understanding your purpose, I think is is really important to you know, kind of helping your well being. Um, and then, you know, so in, in a few months, I will be starting back at the university again. And I've kind of never really left, you know, I've, I've always continued to do some teaching and do some research. Um, but going back into a role that that is very much around um, advocacy and public health and improving oral health, but also around driving um, professional practice, ethics, communication, social responsibility, 
um, and mental health, I think, will will form a very big a very big part of that as well from a from a teaching and from a research perspective. Mm. And I'm sure people are interested to hear um, your why about um, why you went on MasterChef uh, back in <laughs> 2014 as well. Can you share a little bit about sort of you know what happened that made you want to do that, and then like what resulted in it, or a bit of your experience? Yeah, uh, and the the why is probably it's it's a it's a difficult one um because i'm not sure that i really know the answer why mm. <laughs> I, you know i love i love cooking i love eating um so i was always very very interested in that and and the show i think was was always very um you know it was it was something that i really really enjoyed um i i you know recently left the university i was in an, in a new job um and a very very close friend of mine passed away at a, at a very young age and that kind of shook me a little bit I think in you know you sort of start to think you know life life is short um and what are the what are the things that I'm missing out on doing and so it was it was kind of that context I think that I I just thought you know what I'll I'll, I'll give this a go and what's the worst thing that can happen that you know I don't get on the show um that probably wouldn't have been the worst <laughs> <laughs> could have happened actually um and and you know I, I was fortunate that I that I did and um it was a it was a really good experience it was a challenging experience I mean I was um you know locked away from home for five months during filming with limited contact with with my family it was you know tough for my wife and my, my kids during that during that experience um it was it was stressful in a, in a way that's very different to, to dentistry, but one that, um, you know, one of the aspects I think that that we all struggle with um, as health professionals is autonomy and control. We like to control our environments. Um, and when that gets taken away from you, it's it's really tough. And that's what Master Chef was like. You know, we we're living in a house. We had no phone. We had no internet. We didn't know what was happening the next day. Um, and and that lack of control is is um, challenging, but it can be liberating um, as well. And I think you know it's unintended, well, maybe not unintended consequences, but you know. So I'm a I'm a big believer in experiences, doing things, and seeing what happens. Um, and you know, if people ask me for for career advice, and I you know, what should I do? Um, I think you should just do things and see what happens. Um, and so I didn't do MasterChef with any particular plan in mind, um, but it it gave me, um, you know, it gave me a, a whole lot of um, positive outcomes that I didn't really anticipate. You know, having having more of a public presence, um, some media experience that I've then been able to use now in, in my current role. And that's really kind of helped in the advocacy work that I do. Mm. And it's opened up doors in a way that I didn't sort of anticipate or think was possible. So, um, you know, for me, yeah, doing, doing those things, I think is, you know, do them, do them for the experience, but do them for, for, for some of those things that you don't even really know, um, might happen because that can be really beneficial and you learn something from that experience that you might use or you might might never use. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I think um, I, I'm a big believer in staying open to opportunities and just following mm. your passion and then see what follows rather than, you know, chasing money or success, isn't it? Yeah, and, and that's not to say that you you can't plan things out either. Um, and I think, you know, it is probably very personality um, dependent as well. And I, I think, you know, people who map their life out and, you know, I, I need to do this and I need to do that, that's, that's completely fine too. Um, but I think, yeah, if you if you close the door to um, to new experiences, sometimes, you yeah, you, you don't know what you're going to miss out on. Mm, that's right. Um, so what would be top three tips that you would want to give to someone listening um, for preventing burnout or, you know, or even life tips, wisdom from Matt Hopcroft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that I can, imp- I'm not sure that I can impart wisdom, um, you know, and, and as with everything, you know, you t- take, take whatever you can out of, out of it, any particular thing, I think. And, and it can be very individual too. Um, and that I think you, you always need to be a little bit careful about this part of 
a discussion because mm. what works for me won't work for you and what mm. works for you won't work for me. Um, I, I talk a lot about, you know, in, in terms of well-being and probably, you know, let, let's talk about our well-being rather than mental health um, because the two are linked but but slightly different. But if you focus on your well-being, then that's, that's really important. And I think there's kind of three really important pillars around around well-being sleeping well physical activity and eating well um i do okay on two of those <laughs> i don't do okay on the other so i'm a bad person to ask for tips on sleeping because i just i really struggle with that but you know if we don't try and focus and improve that aspect um then you do really you do really struggle from a from a physical point of view if you if you're not if you haven't been sleeping and you're not well rested but also from a mental health point of view um physical activity for me is is running and that's only something that i've got into reasonably recently but i find it to be um i actually find it to be more relaxing and regenerative than i thought it would be um but it you know for me getting out really early in the morning in the dark when there's no one else around is a good way for me um from a mental health point of view to just have have some space in and in, in my own mind and then healthy eating i mean we often slip into the trap of you know unhealthy eating when we're not feeling well um but you know healthy healthy mind healthy body kind of thing i think is is really important um trying to set boundaries but that's you know again that's that's that is kind of um really hard um uh, mindfulness, I think, is is important. I I struggle with that. Um, I try, and that's something that I, that I kind of continue to work on. But I know people who who swear by that, you know, um, because it, it it does work with them really well. And then I think the other thing that that is is really important. Um, and this is then you know moving away from the well being space and back to the mental health space. But if you are struggling, then seeking support. Um, and you know, if you've got a if you've got a good GP, talk to your GP. Um, get help from from a mental health expert. You know, from a psychologist. Um, you know, what do we tell patients all the time when they have a dental problem? Go and see, go and see an expert. Um, that's what we're here to help people with with their oral health. That's what psychologists are there for to help us with our mental health. And I think that that's that. You know, I can't kind of emphasize that enough yeah no thank you very much for sharing so vulnerably and um, helping stimulate more conversation around this area I really appreciate that and um, yeah looking forward to uh, following your journey and seeing what you're going to do um, at Melbourne Uni as well as um, for the rest of our dental profession as well thank you very much Matt thanks Grace